Hello our viewers. Good afternoon, good evening and good morning wherever you are. I'm by the names Emmanuel Ilemut, a pharmacy technician by profession. Today we are going to talk about urinary tract infection. We are going to to know the different infections and how they come about, how they are caused within the urinary tract. So our objectives for today's discussion is what are the UTIs? Then we are going to have the types of the UTIs. Then we are going to have the things that can predispose you to getting these UTIs. Then we are going to have the clinical presentations. How do these different infection of the urinary tract display or how do you know that you have this particular urinary tract infection? Then we are going to have to know the how are they diagnosed. We are going to know about the management and the UTI in special populations, like people who are in that spe special population that are prone to getting UTI. So UTI, that is urinary tract infection. Urinary tract infection involves the the invading of the microorganism. Sorry, it involves microorganism invading the urinary tract infection, and that that can result from the bladder. When when we have an infection at the bladder, like caused by bacteria, then that is what we shall call cystitis. Then when we have um, infection at the urethra, that is what we call urethritis. Then when we have infection at the kidneys is when we call it nephritis. So the, the biggest population of the organism that will invade the urinary tract is E. coli, the so-known E. coli. So when we go to types or classification of UTIs, we shall have um, complicated and uncomplicated. So uncomplicated does not involve structural or functional abnormalities. As we talked before, the uncomplicated, that is cystitis, that is inflammation of the bladder. Then, um, nef then sorry, u urethritis, that is the inflammation of the urethra. Then when we go to complicated, where we have nephritis, that is an uh, inflammation of the nephrons at the kidney center. So each time we have UTI within the bladder and it is not treated, then we in males we are going to affect different organs or different parts within the urinary tract, like um, the prostate. The prostate is just below the bladder. So when the UTI is not managed, we are going to have our prostate inflamed. Our prostate will get inf infected. So when it's still not treated, then it will move through the ureters. Because the, the ureters are the ones that supply the what? The bladder. So when it moves to the, to the from the bladder through the ureter, to the kidneys is when we have nephritis. So as we continue, we have like risk factors of these UTIs. What can prone you to getting these UTIs in both females and males? So we shall have um, recent use of broad spectrum antibiotics. That one mainly will apply to the females because we, in females, we have um, normal flora. So each time we use this broad spectrum antibiotics, they will kill both the, the, the good bacteria, that is the normal flora, and the one it is targeting. So it will reduce the, 
it will reduce the population of the good bacteria within the, the female genitalia. And once that, that the population of that good bacteria is reduced within the gen genitalia, then we shall have overgrowth of the bad bacteria. Those places will have, can have other bacteria, but once we have an imbalance, low levels of the normal flora, then the bad bacteria takes up and infects the place. Then we have um, free, like frequent sexual intercourse, like you have sex with this person, with the other person, so you can easily get infected from a person who has this microorganism in his urinary tract. Then we have females. Females are at higher risk of getting UTI, UTIs compared to the males because the females have a shorter urethra that once they get into contact with this bacteria, then it can easily enter and go and affect the, the, what? the urinary tract compared to the males who have a longer urethra. So the bacteria takes long within takes a longer time in the urethra of a male. So in the due course, it can easily be flushed out by urinating. Then we have pregnancy. Pregnancy. When you, when you're pregnant, the uterus presses on the bladder. So once the the uterus presses on the bladder, then we shall we, we shall not have complete emptying of the bladder and that that can cause a, a good environment for the bacteria to grow in and also it will cause frequent urination and each time you go to urinate you can easily get into contact with this bacteria in those different washrooms that we go to then we are going to direct talk about uh, how will how will this cystitis present the inflammation of the bladder in particular cystitis so this cystitis inflammation of the bladder will present with frequent urination so each time you'll want to go and urinate then another thing is increase urgency to urinate so each time you want to, to urinate immediately like your bladder wants to empty then another thing, we, we shall have painful urination because where the urine is passing is inflamed. There is a wound and the urine contains traces of, of acid. So it will be burning. So we shall have another presentation, what we call hematuria. Hematuria is blood in urine. Then we shall, we can also have fevers, then we can have cloudy urine with unpleasant smell. That is the clinical presentation, or that is how cystitis will present inflammation of the bladder. Then we have how can we how can somebody diagnose that maybe may be may go to the basaos in particular. So they, they can use what we what we call urine dipstick. Where by your where you you a stick containing different properties is dipped into your urine, and different color change within the strip is up is observed. Then they can also observe it under a microscope. What is that particular organism that is causing this cystitis? Then we also have the clinical diagnosis. As we, have see, as we have seen the different signs, those signs, most of them are particular to the cystitis. Then we shall have um, our goals of therapy. Goals of therapy, like before, wh why would we, we be giving you that particular medication? Why would we be giving that particular supplement, that is particular tablet? number one goal of therapy is to prevent or treat systemic consequences of the infection as we said before that once 
this cystitis is not treated, then the bacteria will keep on infecting the whole urinary tract system. So it leaves the bladder after that it has left the bladder because just below the bladder in males we shall have um, the prostate. So it will inflame the prostate. And you know prostate is very important. Prostate is responsible for secretion of semen and semen is important that it is secreted to neutralize the vagina in du du sorry during sexual intercourse. And when it comes to the female, when a UTI is not treated, then it is going to move up to the uterus and it can even affect the uterus lining. We can end up with things like um, endometriosis. Endometri Endometrium is the lining of the uterus. So when once it gets inflamed, is what we call endometriosis. That is uh, consequences of this cystitis once it is not managed in both females and males. Then we have um, to eradicate the invading organism, that is to kill, whereby we shall use antibacterials. Then we, ha we have also prevent the, re the reoccurrence of the infection. As we are going to see, how can we prevent the reoccurrence of the infection? There are some supplements that we shall use to prevent this reoccurrence. We have um, things like um, Eurosol sockets. So these things contain uh, crown max. I think people have come across crown max extract. So crown max is very good supplement. It is main uses. It is going to prevent the attachment of this E. coli on the urinary tract. So it is going to prevent the E. coli or the bacteria from attaching on the urinary tract walls. And this urosol is also very important. It also has sodium carbonate. So sodium, sodium carbonate, once it is released in, in urine, then it will make the urine alkaline. So one, when the urine is made alkaline, then we shall have reduced burning sensation during urination because the, the urine will no longer contain traces of the acid. We shall, it will get when the urine has been neutralized. So we shall reduce on that burning sensation. Then we have also what we call citrus soda. So citrus soda also contains sodium hydrogen carbonate that makes the urine alkaline and reduce it on the burning sensation during urination. So what we didn't talk about is the urosol circuits. So urosol circuits would be used mainly by the adults. So you take one circuit, like get one circuit, put in a glass of water and take it after every 12 hours for five days. Then when it comes to the citrus mm -hmm. soda, citrus soda um, it is a powder, it's in powder form. So we shall measure 10 mils for the adults, put in a glass of water and take it three times. For children from six and above, that is 6 to 12, shall use 5 mils in a glass of water, that is 3 times. Then we have um, Cito. We have Cito syrup. Cito syrup for it, it contains disodium hydrogen citrate and it is also, a, it, will, it will also alkalizes the urine. So it also does the same thing that it neutralizes the urine and when the urine is neutralized, we shall not have burning sensation during urination. Then we have um, Crown Max Aqua. So Crown Max Aqua is the syrup. Is a syrup. It contains um. It mainly contains Crown Max extract, and we talked about Crown Max that it prevents attachment of the bacteria within the walls of the urinary tract. Then um, there is also what we call Crown Max Pro. So Crown Max Pro is the circuit. So we can use it as the Eurosol, the same dosage. So this one contains Crown Max extract. We talked about the use. It has probiotics. 
So probiotics are good bacteria that helps us rebuild the good normal flora, the good bacteria in the females, in especially that is in the females. So once the good bacteria is built up, then the levels of this other bad bacteria goes down and we shall have reduced infection, we shall have reduced number of hospital visits. It also has turmeric extract and turmeric. Turmeric is an is a natural anti-inflammatory, so it will reduce on the inflammation, the swelling, the reddening of the place. So when we go to treatment, treatment especially when we are using um, the antibacterials. So this E. coli, Escherichia coli, this bacteria is, um, is a gram-negative bacteria, so we shall prefer using antibacterials that are either broad spectrum or which have good effect on the gram-negative bacteria. Like when we talk about like uh, cephalosporins, as, as the generation increases, we, we, we are getting a better, we are getting towards a better effect of the gram negative bacteria. So, as we can see, the first generation like uh, cephalexin, cephalexin is a first generation. Then we go like to second generation, that is cephaloxin. So, cephaloxin has a better gram negative effect compared. To the cephalexin which is the first generation when we go to the third generation like cephixim cephixim will have a, a better effect a, a better gram negative effect compared to the cephaloxin so as the group increases sorry as the class as the class of the antibacterials increases especially the cephalosporin then the better the gram negative effect then we, they also Mm, extended spectrum antibiotics like um, amoxicillin. So we, we have something in market called uh, amoxclav. That is a combination of amoxicillin and clavulanic acid. So clavulanic acid will bind to the beta lactam and prevents amoxicillin from being damaged, from be, sorry, from being destroyed by the beta lactamase enzyme. So that one, you can see it has a, a better effect. So you can't compare amoxicillin to amoxiclav because of that. The clavulanic acid will bind to the beta lactam, so preventing amoxicillin from being destroyed by the beta lactamase. But when amoxicillin is given alone, it can easily be destroyed by the beta lactamase. In addition, and end beyond these antibacterials, somebody should always finish treatment. There is what we call um, antibacterial resistance. Antibacterial resistance is real. So each time you use an antibacterial and you don't finish the dose, next time you take it, it will not work because the bacteria has got used to the medication. It has taken, it has, it has been sensitized about the, the, the antibacterial. So next time you give it, it will no longer work. So I urge people to always finish antibacterial treatment always opt for the treatments that you can comply to. There are people who can take antibiotics three times a day. It can, antibiotic can also be taken twice a day. There are those ones that can be taken once a day. There are those ones that are inserted especially for the females. So those different antibiotics. So that is about cystitis. So we are going to nephritis. So nephritis mainly is um, inflammation. Sorry, sorry, urethritis. So urethritis is inflammation of the urethra. It is mainly caused by trichomonas vaginalis. That is the, the main organism, the main organism that causes trichomonas vaginalis. So, Trichomonas vaginalis is a protozoa.
that causes an infection what we call trichomoniasis. So this infection affects both males and females also, but females will have most of the clinical signs or the signs and the symptoms we are about to see compared to the males. It can coexist with vaginal candidiasis as we are going to look what is entailed in the vaginal candidiasis. We are going to look through also that. So how will someone know that has trichom trichomonas vaginalis has invaded and has caused trichomoniasis? How do you know you have trichomoniasis? So these are the signs. You'll have yellow discharge. You'll have foul smell, foul smell discharge. In the females, we shall have vaginal itching, reddening, and burning sensation during urination. So mo mode of transmission, we shall have um, sexual intercourse with the affected person. We shall have.